morning, everybody. It's February 25th, 2020, 10 a.m., and I hereby call to order the meeting of the Story County Board of Supervisors. And if you would like to, please join us in, as we say, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, I would entertain a motion for adoption of today's agenda. So moved. Second. Moved and Second. Olson. Aye. 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 Sorry. Mark and I. <laughs> I'm sorry. It. We all said aye. Uh, we've approved the agenda. Next public comment number one. This comment period is for the public to address topics on today's agenda. If there's anybody who would like to make a comment, would you please come to the microphone right now? Seeing nobody move to the microphone, I'll close public comment number one. Next, we'll have bid openings for bid replacement projects. Um, the first one on 690th Avenue. And we have Darren Moon and Tyler Sparks here to help us through this. So, good morning. Good morning, morning gentlemen. First two projects are actually tied together. The uh, Lincoln 20 project on 600, 690th Avenue and Collins 26 on 720th Avenue. Okay. So we'll do both of those at I the same see. time. Yes, thank you for a correction on that. So the, our first bidder is uh, PCI. They're on theirs. If you're following along on their second page, uh, bid bond is attached and signed. PCI would be Peterson Contractors. Peterson Con Excuse you. me, yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, bid bond for both projects is are attached and signed. The bid for the first project, uh, Lincoln 20, is 156 thousand eight hundred and thirty two dollars and twenty five cents one five six eight three two point two five their bid for Collins 26 is uh, $76,675.90, seven, six, six, seven, five, point nine, zero. And which sheet's that on? The cons? The, the C26 project. Oh, C26. Right Directly below, below so it. So right okay. below it. Yeah. Thank you. Could you give and me then, the number again? It is $76,675.90. Thank you. The next bidder we have is Progressive Structures out of Alcator, Iowa. Uh, they're on their last sheet as you're following along. Thank you. Uh, bid bond uh, is signed and attached. Their bid proposal for uh, Lincoln 20 
is $145,892.50. For the project C26, Progressive Structures bid bond is signed and attached. Their bid for the project is The next bidder we have uh, is Riley Construction out of Ocean, Iowa. Their bid bind is signed and attached for Lincoln 20. And their bid for the project is $171,593.40. For the project C26, their bid bond is signed and attached. Their bid for the project is $84,403.00. Will, do you want to add them up now? No, we'll go ahead. Okay. That's it for that letting. We'll move on. Yep, for them. Oh, so yeah. a, thank you. We'll need to total those and then come back. Uh, for the next project, your next sheet is uh, project P27 on 535th Avenue. Roads is our first bidder. They're out of Des Moines, Iowa, and their bid bond is signed and attached. Their bid for the project is $193,000. Uh, one nine three four one seven point seven zero the next bidder for this project is Manats I and company uh, out of Brooklyn Iowa their bid bond is signed and attached their bid is one hundred and forty six thousand. One hundred and one dollars and eighty cents. One four six one zero oh one point eight zero. That concludes that bid. It appears Brooklyn or Manats is the low bidder on that project. The uh, next project we have is uh, the LFM HG project, which is 680th Avenue, which is also tied with uh, project HG2 uh, around Hickory Grove Lake. Uh, Manats is our first bidder on this project out of Brooklyn. Uh, bid bond is signed and attached.
their bid for project uh, LFM HG is $331,936.33193.96. Their bid bond for Project HD2 is signed and attached. Manat's bid for HG2 is $512,824, or excuse me, $512,800.24. So just to repeat that last part, 800? Yep, 800. So 512,800.24. And their total is $844,734.20. Could you repeat that one more time? Uh, $844,734.20. Thank you, Tyler. And the last project we have is uh, Project L-IC21 on 640th Avenue. The first bidder we have for this is uh, Gerke Incorporated out of Eldora, Iowa. Their bid bond is signed and attached. Could I just clarify, you said, did you say 640th, 645th on my sheet here? Yeah, 645th is okay, correct. Okay, thank you. Sorry. And uh, Gerke, Gerke's bid is $66,000.80, so 66,000.80. Um, Riley Construction, which is on your last sheet, is our next bidder. Uh, their bid bond is signed and attached. And Riley's bid is $60,778.50. Next bidder is Progressive Structures. They're on the last sheet as well, out of Elkada, Iowa. Their bid bond is signed and attached. Progressive's bid is $61,707.10. Point one zero. And then our last bidder for this project is Peterson Contractors. Uh, their bid bond is signed and attached. And Peterson Contractors' bid is $58,679.62. 
and it appears Peterson was the low bidder on that project. Prices look good on all these, so I don't see any issues with that. So we will double check the numbers and bring it back to you next week for uh, boarding the contract. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank Prices you. do look very good. Thank you very much for your work, and we'll see you next week on it. Okay. Next, we will move on to, we just did, went through items 5 through 8, so now to agenda item 9, agency reports. I don't believe we have any today. And consideration of minutes, we'll have those minutes next week. Um, consideration of personnel actions before we, I would entertain a motion. I have been notified of a correction under uh, Wendy Schmitz. It says 1860 per hour. It should read 1960 per hour, and that's because of supplemental um, wages that she receives through, uh, through some training, and I was notified of that yesterday. So I would entertain a motion with the correction that her wage should be at 1960 per hour. And Alyssa, you can confirm that, right? Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. I'll still move with that, with the correction. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? If not, Olson? Aye. Pedens? Aye. Merkin? Aye. Motion carried. And I have nothing um, changed on the consent agenda. Does anybody need to pull an item for discussion? If not, I'd entertain a motion for consent agenda. I'll still move as presented. Second. Okay. Discussion? No. Olson? Heddens. I'm aye. sorry. I looked at you and I said Olson. <laughs> Heddens, aye. Olson. Aye. Merkin, aye. Okay, that's approved. Uh, public hearing items, we have none. Additional items, Alyssa Wignall for a discussion and consideration of request by Wayne Selley for repayment options. Good, Good morning, morning, Alyssa. Good morning. Good morning. So this was an agenda item a couple weeks ago. Um, if you remember, we had a deputy sheriff that resigned within a year of starting with the county, and, and we had an agreement with him that if he left, there would be um, repayment of ILEA expenses, um, wages, and different things. So he did um, send a request to the Board of Supervisors for different payment options. Um, after the board meeting a couple weeks ago, um, we did, um, the county attorney, assistant county attorney, captain, and the sheriff, and I met, um, and, and you will see a memo from the sheriff regarding this, this issue. Um, what I would like to point out is um, Wayne Selly's letter does have um, a total of 8746, and the sheriff's letter has 8539. What's not included in the sheriff's is the deputy uniforms. Um, they do get those back from the individual um, when they leave, so we don't recoup payment on those from any other employees. And then one thing, the PIT certification was 225, not 125. Um, which was an error on, on my part when I sent that letter out to Wayne. So that's why those two amounts don't um, add up. So we are, if one of the options would be to consider um, accepting amount, an amount under, Correct. and that would be the $8,539 in the sheriff's. Yeah. But those would be the expenses that the county paid to send. Um, this deputy to the um, academy. So it doesn't include wages, um, but it does include the tuition and um, all the other expenses associated with that, that training. I did. It varies across other jurisdictions. There are a couple that, that put in the agreement the wages. There are some that just collect the ILEA, and there are other agencies that don't, don't do an agreement with their individual. Um, we did look at the code section. The wages do come in if you look at decertification of a police officer. That it, it spells out what needs to be in an agreement, and it has to be prior to sending. And it, it says wages while they attend the academy. So that's why it was in our agreement. Um, it wasn't just something that was placed in there. Um, it was if you wanted to, for some reason, go after, you know, do a decertification of that officer. There was some pretty specific 
um, pieces in, in Iowa Code 501 that state that. And decertification is indicative only of that person representing a particular unit as? No, I think um, it's their police office. It's their certification. So it would be decertification of also their ILEA training? That's my understanding, is you were going to decertify. I don't know if Connie, yeah. There are different things in the code section that says where you can go after okay. um, decertification. There's other, you know, there's if they commit a crime. I mean, I mean there's other yeah. things, but this was, this was spelled out in Chapter 6. It's the decertification of a police officer. We are not asking no. for decertification. No, absolutely correct. not. Okay. Nope. I just want to make sure that we, we are didn't not. end up doing no. something that took no. away in the agreement, his ability to work. In the agreement, it does say if, if the individual doesn't repay that the county, I mean, that could happen. So, and that's from the code section. So, but no, we are not going through that process. Okay. Absolutely not. So the 85. 39 is the amount that we should be looking at rather than the 8746. You know, the deputy uniforms, if it, I mean, they do get those back. The sheriff's office, they return. When an employee leaves, they turn in their uniforms. So we, my understanding is they do have those back. Okay. So looking at the back of the room again at Connie, back there, the sheriff's department administrative um, office supervisor. Manager. Is that manager? Mm-hmm. This one's flashing. I don't know. I'm going to have you talk into this. Uh, just so you know, when people turn in their uniforms, they go back in the uniform room. If we have deputies that need a uniform and they happen to fit into those, they will take those uniforms and continue to oh. use them. Or as we get reserve deputies, if reserve deputies will fit into that particular uniform, we do utilize those uniforms again. We don't just throw them away. Okay. So they're county sheriff's depart yes. department property? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe they were the ones stored across the street or wherever that was, but okay, so got it. Okay, so all right, thank you. Um, my my feeling about this, I think I may have ex thanks, County. I may have expressed this last time was that um, I'm uncomfortable on the wages, you know, trying to collect mm -hmm. on the wages. So I haven't changed my mind about that. The you know, um, um, we were getting some good out of that. Etc. So I guess now uh, looking at the 8539, um, I think the other time, thing I said two weeks ago I felt pretty strongly about was um, I did not want to drain someone's bank account when they were unemployed. I, that just, to me, felt uncomfortable. So I had asked about, um, you know, the possibility, I'd ask the county attorney about the possibility of what we could do for some kind of repayment arrangement that carried more weight than the normal just, we're going to put you on a payment plan. Did, has anybody heard back from the county attorney's office on that? No, and, and, and in doing the research of these other agreements, there are repayment plans built into some of the other cities and counties, and they charge interest. Um, you know, it's whatever the board wants to do. My recommendation would be to do the one lump sum instead of setting up monthly payments. But that is that is whatever the board wishes um, to consider. I think in Mr. Selly's letter, he, he could not pay the whole amount back in a lump sum, so he requested a um, monthly payment plan. But he did offer the um, reduced just for the ILEA expenses. Right, and mm -hmm. yes, that was everything in his savings. Mm -hmm. that, that's what he noted that's in his letter. That's what he noted. Yep. So, so, I de so I guess along with, if, if, if we were to consider something that were more than one payment, more than the lump sum, would be requesting a hefty down payment, if you will, um, on any contract that would carry out with more than one payment. Um, on this. Yeah, um, we don't obviously be looking at this letter and this references <clears throat> if we opt to just go with the reduced amount um, that versus the whole of the salary in there um, that he paid from his savings. It doesn't say that it was oh, the one thing was depleted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the question then is, is um, what if you don't have future 
from him, and then you have to take some other type of legal recourse. Mm -hmm. um, and that could be more problematic mm -hmm. for the individual, um, potentially. If I, I do wish there was somebody from the county attorney's office here today, because my next question would have been about, well, I don't know what the dollar amount is for small claims court anymore. So when you're talking about if we have to go after an amount. It, the 8,700 would fall, my understanding, it's less than 25, I think it's 25,000. Thank you. But I know the full amount was would be not small claims. Would, yeah, but so, so anything, that's my understanding. anything under the full amount, and I'm not, I'm not an attorney, so yeah, I know. I just I guess we could Google yeah. it. Yeah, All right. So, right. Well, but so that would be my thought that our re reclamation process would be the same, whether we don't accept his offer, but we say you only owe the eighty five thirty nine, but we're just want a lump sum, and if he doesn't pay it, we're in the same same process situation that we would be if we took a partial payment and then put out for a uh, repayment plan with maybe minimum payment like $50 a month or something while he is not working and increasing that amount then substantially once he is working. He signed a contract for what would be the entire amount. and. He um, is now saying he would be willing to do this. I think personally it's better to get it taken care of than have it be a continuing, ongoing thing where we'd have to go back, spend uh, staff time, possibly attorney time, going back again and again to get, it, to get something um, done. I think it's a good idea to just get it taken care of and do basically accept his offer to pay that much now. I think too if the if if you accept the $8500 there would be some I would ask the board to allow me to draft a release and satisfaction so that individual would know that this debt is paid for. I, I think the individual I can't speak for the individual but that would um, give them some, you know, able to move on and, and, and from this and not have this debt hanging over his head for years. I agree Depending, with that. Yeah, um, yeah. Would the board be open to a lump sum payment that was less than the 85? As I think another thing I said before a couple weeks ago, I've been laid off. I mean, well, this is not a layoff. It's a voluntary quit. But mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've struggled in between, you know, jobs before mm -hmm. and, um, we do happen to know in this situation, since this is the sheriff's son-in-law, that that uh, there is uh, there's children involved, and I just hate to do this to anybody. One, one and thing not I remember leave anything in their bank. Account. One thing that I would notice is that's in a letter. We did not. Ver I mean, there's no way for us to verify that, Loris. So about I mean, how much money's in there? Correct. Understand that that's in drafted in the letter, but but there there was nothing. I mean, we don't we don't have a form that they sign out saying this is that we look at this so it, while it was put in the letter there is no way for us to go and check to verify that that's factual so i'm not saying it's not i'm mm -hmm. just saying um i think we need to look at at the issue and what, what the offer okay. was and make the yeah. best decision and i there. just want to make it clear that i would do this for anybody okay. based upon my own personal history of not having a lot of money you know during a during a period of unemployment Okay. Um, I, yeah, I appreciate your comment. I think since we were initially looking at the full amount of the salary, um, secondly, that it was um, Kelly's suggestion of just paying back the uh, ILEA cost. Um, and actually, this is going to be a couple hundred less than what mm -hmm. this letter had stated. Mm -hmm. um, I do think um, just paying off a lump sum, getting that letter of satisfaction out there so we don't have that, um, or at least this debt hanging mm -hmm. over them. Um, I think that would probably be comforting to know that that is, you know, done and over with, can move on and move forward. Um, that would be where I would be uh, more inclined to look at. Okay. Are we ready for a motion? Further discussion? If not, I'd entertain a motion. 
I would make the motion that uh, we have Mr. Sully pay the lump sum of $8,539 and once that is completed, uh, I'm directed to the amount to provide Mr. Sully with a letter of satisfaction for the repayment in debt. <coughs> I'm going to let Linda second it. I will second it. Any further discussion? Edmonds? Aye. Wilson? Nay. Merkin? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Um, thank you, Lisa, thank you. for your work on this. Anything yep. else? To nope, I think that's it. Okay. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Then we will move on to... Department reports. I'm up. You're up. That Joe Quaker. And it's RVM now, not IRVM. Is that RVM. correct? RVM. RVM. Oh, okay. Explain that to us, if you would. No longer integrated? <laughs> <laughs> I am. That's right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I'm having a little trouble hearing today. <clears throat> The last couple days I got something going on so if you have some questions just you can just yell at me I'm used to it <clears throat> um, so the last time we met was November 19th I believe so that would have been fall mode um, and that's uh, where we started in my report uh, drainage ditch grant 13 which is over by i-35 mm -hmm. along the side on the east side so um, Allison and I and Tanner and Tyler spent all the way through about New Year's cutting away and if you ever drive that 265th you'll see all the brush piles so um, we didn't quite get done with that <clears throat> um, I think we did about twelve thousand dollars worth of brush work and we only levied about ten so we'll have to go back and and relevy that project and finish it up so but we made a lot of progress uh, <clears throat> with that we switched gears or Tyler did to uh, burning brush piles and so I say that it kind of rolls off the tongue but I did get a question the other day like why are you burning the brush piles so it kind of makes sense to me but if you don't not use the process, um, for those that might not know, so when we go in and, and do some logging along an open ditch to clear some of the trees, you know you have an option of, of uh, hauling it away somewhere, which takes money and fuel. Um, you can bury it, which the EPA doesn't allow in a lot of cases, or you can stack it, let it dry, and burn it. So that's what we're doing. Uh, some of these piles are. <clears throat> Uh, as close to the ditch proper as we could get because there's not a lot of room and, and uh, you know the landowners are farming next to there so you don't want to pile the brush in their field we have with their permission but they got to farm around it um, until the pile dries down and we can burn it so typically if it's in their way we it's only for a year or so and we can burn that off the other thing is you don't want the piles to sit too long because if you have high water it all goes back inside and then it causes a lot of trouble downstream. So that's what we're doing today. Um, we're up by McCallsburg today, depending on this weather. By the end of the week, we're gonna finish up <clears throat> on Grant 5. Uh, so that'll be it for drainage ditch work for us uh, until we start spraying re-sprouts in July. Um, so that's kind of how that goes. Um, We've talked about moving over to more contract work, you know, contract generated system. I think that's a good plan. Uh, you know, Tyler and I can do as much as we can, but if we can grow a contractor and there's some out there that do some of the brush work for us to spray some of the re-sprouts, I think that that's kind of the direction we're going. So currently he's, Tyler's looking at getting someone in to look at these projects uh, and so keep in mind that there's 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 contractors out that will do logging any construction company but when it comes to the spring re-sprouts there's not a lot of contractors in the state like two and last year 
And they're, the, they're the, by the way, the same ones that do the, the roadside brush spraying. Mm -hmm. So last year, we contacted both of them and only one had time to do that work. And I don't know if you remember, <clears throat> we had four townships that they were gonna do brush work in, but they, they didn't quite get it done. They ran out of time too. So there is a little money in the budget, and I'm kind of skipping around a little bit, uh, left in our contract services because they didn't get done in the fall, in the summer. They're, they're hopefully gonna come back this spring and finish up. So the, the gist of this full circle conversation, there's not a lot of contractors out there yet to do brush spraying. It's must, not the, probably the funnest job in the world. Um, I have a question there, if I might. Yeah. When you're spraying drainage dis <clears throat> ditches, do you have to use different chemicals than when you're spraying roadsides, or or you, you're using chemicals that you use around water everywhere? So that's a good good question. Herbicides that you use in the right of way mm -hmm. and drainage ditches are different certification than what you use in ag. Yeah. Okay. Whole, whole different world. Um, so uh, roadside herbicides can work in drainage districts or in drainage ditches, mm -hmm. but in general, Linda, any herbicide that you're gonna use, uh, whether it's in a drainage ditch or next to a wetland has to be certified for aquatic use. Mm -hmm. And there's only a couple. Yeah. So yes, there is a very special herbicide, which we use. It has to be certified registered for uh, use adjacent to water. That answer your question? Mm -hmm. um, so you've heard me, I'm gonna kind of move on. Any questions on the drainage ditch stuff? We're kind of good with that. We're on hold until the spring or the summer. You've heard about the no spray program. Um, I just need to sit down and get a letter drafted, and then we need to send it out to those people that have notified us about their concerns of herbicide. And by the way, I typed it up, a sensitive crop farmers, but it's just not sensitive crop farmers. It could be anybody. Mm -hmm. It could be anybody who owns land in Story County who's concerned about herbicide. You don't have to be a producer. So um, I just <clears throat> need to pull the trigger on that before it gets too busy and get people to come in and sign up. Uh, Tyler let me know that he's been busy. You know, he's the new, he's the, the safety chair. Oh. Okay. Four Story County Conservation. Used to be me. Um, so he took over. I only did it for like 22 years. I think it was time to go. Um, and we're working with Todd, the, that proverbial term JSA. And so uh, we have some unique job tasks, loading the hydro seeder is something that you just don't find, you can't copy and paste that one. You gotta kind of start from scratch. So we're getting that done. Um, I don't know if Todd's here or not. Nope. No, he's not. Um, any questions on the JSAs? Yes, well actually not on the JSA, but can, can you explain to me, now that Tyler is the chair of the safety committee and that's the chair of the safety committee for Story County Conservation, correct. correct? Okay, but is Tyler also going to the meetings for the uh, county-wide safety committee? You know, that's a good question, Loris, because I saw uh, there's rust a wall. I okay, think, right. And, and so when we had the changing of the garden, the garden, the guard, um, Russ was brought in to do that task. So, um, I can provide some feedback for that. So here's my concern, is that what's happening at the countywide safety committee, the information, it may not necessarily always get transferred or we'll get a kind of a readjustment of what's going to the Story County Conservation okay. Committee. So whatever you guys want to organize, as long as there's follow through, and carry through, I think, you know, I mean, that just making sure that what's happening at the full <laughs> safety committee for the county is also being carried forward and vice versa. So is Russ on the conservation safety committee? Yeah. So maybe he and he, Tyler just need to coordinate yeah. on that. I will talk to Tyler about that and okay. see, how, see how, you know, he feels how the communication is. For me, it worked, for me, it worked better being the chair 
of Story County Conservation and also attending the right. county-wide meetings because, right. you know, but mm -hmm. hopefully it's working for those guys. Well, for them and also for making sure that it's working for the state, the bigger, or the county-wide county, yeah. safety Got committee it. too that way. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, yeah, I'll touch base with Tyler. So I'm going to keep moving quick, as quick as I can, and not get, you know, see something shiny. I wanted to throw the drill maintenance and repair in there because, CR, you know, we have, a, we have a new farm bill. CRP, the Conservation Reserve Program sign-up is going, and we like that. It's good for us. Uh, we want to buffer our streams and creeks, and we have support from you guys, uh, from the Board of Supervisors and Conservation Board. We have all the seating equipment we like to rent out. We just need to get it in the shop, get it the, up to snuff, and uh, – get ready when it's go time. So we're doing that. Um, Do you ever hear comments when you're um, talking to the people who are coming in to rent the equipment about there's not enough funding to go ahead and do pilot programs or experimental on their land? I mean, you know, that they're, I'm just asking here. We had a discussion during the budget a little bit about, you know, being able to do prairie strips and, and or, you know, strips and that kind of thing. And we talked about whether there'd be some funding. Uh, soil and water is giving some money out, too. Should that we do more to soil and water? So I'm just wondering if you're getting any feedback about... All the time. Okay. Uh, I mean, it's... <clears throat> the prairie strip thing is incorporated into CRP. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and there's... Not to belabor that, but there's a lot of different CRP programs. You have the pollinator, you have the filter strip, you have all this other, all these programs, and um, they're all cost shared at different levels. Okay. Um, most of our equipment rental, most of the acres that we put in that you see in my report, whether it's 200 a year or 1,000 um, that we rent out with our drills plant, are government contract plantings. There are some, maybe a, a less than a third, where people do things on their own behalf. They're not really going to plant their corn or bean field with a permanent, with with anything but corn and beans. They're, you know, unless they're going to get paid to do it. But I do, we do get some waterways that are done. People want waterways. Um, There's but, a grass waterway. And I don't know if I'm a answering your question, but yeah. in the roundabout way, mm -hmm. uh, most. Most of our work is done through uh, government subsidized programs, okay. and they're always talking about how to get funding. Okay, so it, it, it's an ongoing conversation yeah. rather than a very pointed right. about we need some more money from this particular for a particular program. And to Thank be you. fair about it, it does they, the farm bill changes from year to year. What's you know there can be a really great program like a pollinator habitat program. It was there. Mm -hmm. Four years ago that they decided, oh my gosh, that was too popular and cost yeah. way too much money for that seed, so they don't do that anymore. So, But what, what, what a landowner really needs to do is go talk to the people at the, at the farm service agency and, you know, look at their land and explain where it is and what issues there are, and they're very good at... You know, helping somebody find a program. Yeah. You know, they'll find where, you another you program fit in? sometimes. There, there, there's some money somewhere. Where can you so fit it, in? So it takes some work, but I think the first step is just telling people, you know, go to the FSA. Now, the the contracts they've got right now, I think uh, the sign up date's the end of February. I'm, I don't know. Um, yeah. Well, there's uh, continuous sign ups. There's so. some continuous ones, but, but what they're some doing. Some programs have a deadline. Yeah, so I think it's just getting getting some information out to landowners, and I'm going to start bringing um, some of their materials to drainage uh, district meetings too. Okay. So Thank you. Yeah, you, and, you know, and I'll, I'll wrap up by saying that w one of the reasons we got into this, you know, was we just it was needed, you know, uh, the the equipment rental, and we are mm -hmm. we provide technical service. The county does, which helps them keep their price down. We provide equipment, with, you know, which makes it easier to do. And the other thing I'd like to throw in there, there are nonprofits out there like Pheasants Forever uh, or Ducks Unlimited, the Audubon Society, Big Blue Stem. You know, if you want to write a little note and ask for some funding, you know, there's always a little bit you can get. So there's, you know, everyone's trying to pitch in. Okay. Thank you. You bet. Um, so 
we are getting that building is extension before June, before next fiscal. So Tyler and I have a little bit of work to do. We need to build the pad up and level it and get it ready to build the building on. So that's us. We're probably going to get some help from Darren's crew or, or Mike's crew. Everyone's going to pitch in, but that's on the, that's kind of coming off the back burner. We need to get that going, but um, we'll, be, we'll be getting that done and then the building will start. <clears throat> um, going to kind of talk about budget. So you've already heard we're getting this new spray truck. That's nothing new. Um, it'll be new to us trying to figure that system out. You know, getting the, the truck is has a GPS and a lot of bells and whistles. So the learning curve on that will be <clears throat> will be fun. Um, and the other thing too is uh, we're getting the sprayer with that, the GPS. And Darren, I think it's kept you in the loop. They have a new truck coming, a new plow truck. Their old one, and I don't know the number on it, um, they were going to trade it in, but we talked, and we are going to take that over, That the truck. It's, uh, it's going to switch over to our inventory, since we're both out of the rural use uh, tax dollars. We're going to take that truck. Uh, Charlie, the mechanic, will take the dump box off of it and all the plow stuff and we'll have the truck and we're gonna put the hydro seeder on it and get rid of get rid of Reno. <laughs> Reno's been good. But nineteen ninety six and five hundred and eleven thousand miles it's time to go. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're excited for that. Reno. <laughs> so we're we're uh, thanks to Darren, we're gonna We'll, we'll do that swap and we plan, I did budget money, by the way, um, in case we couldn't do it in house, mm -hmm. we will uh, competitively bid a couple different outfits in Des Moines that we can pull both trucks up. They can lift the hydro seater off and put it on the other one, mm -hmm. hook it up, get our lights on it, all the emergency lights and get that done. Now we can do that in house. It's just, yeah, how much time do you have? So, um, yeah. Uh, I kind of keep moving through some of the, the budget stuff. We did budget for a new another drill. We, we are going to take the old 1996 eight foot to the auction in the fall. Um, we also have a yellow trailer hand built in 1968. It's a good trailer. It's time to go too. It's going to go to the auction in the fall, DOT auction, and we're we have budgeted money for this coming FY to uh, to get an, another trailer. Now, uh, that may be partially funded by the Living Roadway Trust Fund. The Living Roadway Trust Fund has changed. Uh, there's a new uh, person in charge of that. They're redoing um, some things, uh, some, you know, their, their, their priorities on what can be funded. And I don't know what those are yet. I'm thinking a trailer is not very high priority. It might be, but I think there's other things that are necessary for other IRVM programs to succeed, and a trailer is probably not high on the list. But we're going to write the grant anyway. Um, the other thing, too, is in the new building that we're getting, uh, we are going to just buy a pre made cage. You've seen those? They're up. It's, you can just slip it in your, a corner of your building and we'll placard that, and that's where our herbicide is going to go. Mm -hmm. So it, it'll have a lock, you can't get in it. It's, it's well ventilated, we'll have lights, so it passes all, all the requirements for uh, a, a herbicide storage facility. And that also, I think, is grant eligible, a part of it. We'll see, okay? Yeah. Um, on, on the building then, you're, are you still gonna need space over at the fairgrounds also? You know, I just love that building. Um, not everything is going to fit into that 40 by 40 okay. shop of ours, mm -hmm. uh, you know. They're, so yeah, I mean, if it's available, so. everything we can put under a roof is just saves everyone. Right. So when the fair board, either when we all three met with the fair board, or I went to. Um, yeah, I think it was when we all three met with the FOIA board. I mentioned about you wanting maybe to put some gravel. Yeah. You know, like they said, just go ahead and call okay. Michelle. Will okay. do. Okay. But they'd be more than open to that. All right. Allowing you. Okay. And I'll, we'll figure out the billing. But yeah, I think we yeah. can touch it up around there and make it nice. We've been in and out of there quite a bit. 
and it's soft now. It's a little melty, and I don't. It's not had as much traffic for years as, as what what will be done to it. So, to make it better would be good. <clears throat> um, quickly on staffing. Okay, so we are currently interviewing for seasonal staff right now. Um, I our RVM. We have two openings, two seasonal staff, um, and they one could start as soon as mid-April. But most of these kids are in school, so that's probably not going to happen. Uh, they could work part-time, but typically we start them in May, and just so you know, they can go all the way through summer, and I do have funding to keep one on full-time all the way through December, and that's typically someone who's graduated. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're, we're getting some staffing, uh, and the new spray truck that we're getting, the cab over, that requires a class D, as in dog, CDL, Sh I mean a chauffeur's license, mm -hmm. is that right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, class D CDL, which Tyler and I have. I mean, I got a class A, so it trumps that. He has a class B. So we can drive it. However, our seasonal staff can't. And we don't mm -hmm. expect them to. We're not going to, you know, we'll do the driving. They can run the switches. So um, th we'll be with them the whole time. We'll kind of hopefully mitigate some bad things that might happen. So we're trying to, you know, we're going to be working with the seasonal staff. So I just thought I'd let you know that. Um, you can look through the staff affiliations. Tyler and I are active in about every little organization we have, can you whether tell it be us the what week. Stand for? What does the firm stand for? AFIR. Uh, that is the Association for Integrated Roadside Managers. Ah. Now, they'll have to change it because the eye is gone, but... Yeah. Okay. That's too bad because the firm really has yeah. a ring to it. Maybe we'll keep it. And Tyler's, uh, that the IWCA is the Iowa Weed Commissioners Association. Mm -hmm. And then I'm on the I'm on that uh, the Grand Advisory Committee for Living Roadway Trust Fund okay. still. And as you know, Tyler recently joined the REAP Assembly Group, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Looking at doing some fire this spring, hopefully. Um, we're going to start planting, get the hydro cedar done. And, you know, what was all this stuff that Darren and, and Tyler did? And there's a lot of projects going on. So there's going to be, you know, some seeding to do. Uh, it'll Spring's on the way. We're going to be running. What are you going to burn? County county property? We will, we're just going to light it up with a north wind and let it go all the way through Story County. No. Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll call the fire department. Yeah. So, I, are you looking at specific plantings that you're going to burn? I, um, well, I, I typically do roadsides, but mm -hmm. I do help the other staff do their wildlife areas. We haven't okay. sat down to prioritize. Okay. Um, I always hit a couple remnant cem uh, cemeteries. Amy's mm -hmm. not around anymore, so I got to keep that up. Um, mm -hmm. We want to keep our Pioneer cemeteries good. That has some really neat vegetation mm -hmm. on it. So we'll pick a couple of those. The Prairie Rail Trail, by the way, is one of our, our highest quality uh, linear rem prairie remnants we have in the, in the county. Mm -hmm. So we always burn a portion of that. Um, and then some roadsides, so. Yeah, I remember when you took me out driving around last year and we looked at that and you, there was one place that was just particularly beautiful and you said that had been a yep. recent burn. Yeah, so we have all that mapped out. Yeah. And I can't, you know, we'll have to, we haven't really sat down looking at burn okay. plans yet, so. I'll call you if you want to come out and join us. So, um, contract brush, mm -hmm. you've heard about that forever. Uh, <clears throat> that gentleman's going to come down and, you know, we're going to bid that out here in about a month, see if we can't get two people, two, two firms to bid on contract spray. I've already mentioned that. Um, and, uh, I thought you were going to try to do all the top tier townships this we year. We got to finish the bottom first. So yeah, the bottom the four, and then we go up top. Okay. Okay. And that really depends on if they're going to come back in the spring and finish up and use up the, the money that we have to finish, you know, up what they didn't get done. So it's kind of hard to decide what townships to bid out until they get the work done, if you see what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah. Cool. All good. You're busy. Yeah. I think about 20. Did I get it done in five minutes? You sure. Oh, I wouldn't. Yeah. We'll say so. <laughs> Thank Any you. other questions?
Oh. Well, it's nice to come in and chat. Thank you. It's good to see you, Joe. Yeah, and I yeah, really appreciate that. All right. Thank you. You bet. Okay. Upcoming agenda items. Anything that anybody wants to make sure we get on the agendas next week? Uh, I'm going to put on, I forgot, did not get to, to it in time this week, but about the um, possible of funding for Volunteer Center, uh, making up some of what was uh, not included in the asset, but also to separate it out. Um, would like to also see, but I don't think it would be for next week's agenda, but uh, us to have a conversation about the possibility of having um, the kind of uh, program and department managers who are not reporting to us on a quarterly basis. I'm thinking of um, uh, risk management and maybe um, outreach to start giving us a quarterly report just like the other departments do. So I'd like to have that discussion. Risk management and whom? Well, I'm thinking uh, uh, outreach and special projects, a quarter, maybe a quarterly report. So you're a, you would be asking for board staff to give quarterly reports as well as department heads? Yes, given the fact that we ask our actual department heads and in these two positions, they are doing work that we're not always getting updated on. And so that, yes, I mean, now, so we can discuss mm -hmm. that, and I think we have to discuss that at the board table. Can we, okay. Anything else? No, that's it for me. You said you don't I don't have anything. I don't either. We'll move on then to liaison assignments, committee mm -hmm. meeting public updates. Public forum two. Public forum number two. Thank you. Comments from the public. Items not on the agenda. Board may not take any action because of the open meetings law, but may do so in the future. Is there anybody who would like to make a comment? If so, would you go to the microphone? Okay. If not, close public forum number two. Thank you. Next, liaison assignments, committee meeting updates, and announcements from the supervisors. Liz, would you like to start? Sure. So let me just look at my calendar here. So it's been kind of a busy week. Um, um, sorry. Um, so Friday, just this past Friday, I participated in the um, Stepping Up Summit conference mm -hmm. call. Um, they are looking, um, they still haven't solidified a date to have that summit. Um, they were looking at October, um, but October right before an election, if you want to get auditors to attend, um, they've been told that uh, very unlikely they'd probably get an auditor uh, to attend during that time. Um, so they are kind of looking at September. They were trying to piggyback on the um, fall ISAC conference, and there wasn't sounding like that was going to work initially. Um, they're kind of reevaluating and see if that might be a possible op option. Um, so hopefully we'll have a date um, mm -hmm. uh, figured out by the next meeting. Um, uh, last night I participated in um, class three of the Board of Health leadership class that I'm partaking in. It's a six course. Mm -hmm. So last night's topic was on um, laws guidelines and regulations um, related to public health. Um, today um, we have the, um, uh, we have a conference board meeting um, tonight and I believe we also have a work session this afternoon, a secondary roads work session mm -hmm. this afternoon and then the conference board meeting at 5.30 um, tonight. Um, tomorrow I have on. 5.30? I thought the agenda said 6. I thought it said 5.30. Okay, I'll check. We'll check. I'll re-double check on that, yeah, because I was actually kind of looking at it myself, um, and there might be two different emails that I... I have 6 o'clock. You have 6, but I thought I saw another thing that said from Diane that said... And, at, you know, it, that makes sense, but I will, yeah, so it, let's all it does coordinate to, afterwards. Yep, it does to me, too, um, except for Leanne, she had sent something that said... 5.30. Leanne, who also sits on the Nevada School Board, said 6 o'clock is on hers also. Is the agenda actually says 6, right? Mm hmm Okay. Okay. Maybe they want you to come early. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I do see 6 on this one. I had another one that said 5.30. Okay. So that's why that's, why that's the error. So I've just double-checked on that. So 6 p.m. Um, then I have on my calendar for Wednesday, the, uh, there's a quarterly orientation meeting. Um, and then we have the Grant 5 um, drainage district meeting uh, tomorrow evening. Um, Thursday, um, we have the recognition for community services and veterans affairs. Um, and then um, we're also doing our 
monthly CICS meeting this Thursday because our normal date falls with the ISAC spring conference. Um, so they moved it back to um, this week. And then um, Friday, I plan on attending the chamber's legislative luncheon. So that's so far what's on my calendar. Okay, Loris. Um, so I want to make note of a meeting I attended last week, the Hunger Co Coalition. And I just bring back that both the Salvation Army and Bethesda Pantry representatives were there. We did not have a MICA representative last week. But Bethesda and uh, Salvation Army both shared that their numbers uh, have been very high for latter parts of January and so far in February. So the Salvation Army ended up purchasing 6,000 pounds of food from the Iowa Food Bank last month. And they had one day with 30 visitors in one day. And Bethesda ended up purchasing $7,000 worth of foods from the Iowa Food Bank and had a one day 35 visitors. They were unable to put a finger on exactly what was happening right now to move up the need. But I just said I'd bring it back again to let you know. So I'm um, going to be hanging out, I guess, with most of those meetings with Lisa and Linda this week. Um, the difference will be I will not be able to make the community services and VA recognition on Thursday morning as there's a herd of board meeting. And given we're going to actually be discussing the changes I kind of gave you a preview, quick preview on uh, Thursday, I really need to attend that meeting. Uh, Thursday night, I'll be at the Community and Family Resources uh, meeting up in Webster city and then for, uh, yes Friday for the ADC legislative luncheon also so that takes care of where I'm headed this week okay all of those meetings as well I did attend the ADC, AEDC board meeting last Friday morning and both Justin and Brenda gave excellent presentations on the work they're doing in the rural communities or the small communities in the workforce and lots of good work going on there um, we, um, let's see, yes, we have a work session this afternoon with the engineer and I will also be at the uh, conference board meeting tonight, whenever it is, and probably will stay for a little bit of the council yeah. meeting afterwards. Um, drainage district five, Wednesday, and Thursday I have uh, we'll be at the Community Services and VA Recognition. Also, a StoryCom meeting in the afternoon and Prairie Rivers Board in the evening and Friday Chamber Legislative Lunch. Sounds pretty much like the same thing, a couple different wow. things. So, in next Monday, I'll be at COLO um, Council meeting. So, that looks like what I've got going on. So, we'll all have a busy week. And I double checked the meeting tonight is at 6 p.m. It's at 6. Okay. Yes. Super. Thank you. Any other announcements? Anything else for the good of the cause? Okay. No. If not, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. Second. Olson? Aye. Kenneth? Aye. Merkin? Aye. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Good.